uh, or Slanesh is now locked away. Because we don't yeah, gotta deal with her anymore. Funny that we yeah. There, there's apparently three factions of her followers left. One of which is, uh... I don't remember. Uh, one of which is trying to replace her, one of which is still looking for her, and one of which I don't remember what they're doing. Okay, this is the one, I'm pretty sure. I was... There's four Chaos Gods. Except not really. There's actually quite a few more than that that are now of debatable Oh yeah, this one. And they mostly involve Warhammer Fantasy. There were yeah. Chaos Gods of Law and Order once upon a time, and most Warhammer fans know the fact that... That is that strange. Chaos Gods of Law and Order. I mean, yeah, but... You gotta kind of remember the whole point of the Chaos Gods, where they're supposed to be like the representation of certain aspects and stuff. It's just that they've kind of taken it to the extreme. I guess Law and Order at, can go at, too uh, far, too. Yeah. Yeah, just like look at Nurgle, because Nurgle's supposed to be I entropy, like the acceptance of death and stuff, which is weird. Mabel, I don't want to ever look at Nurgle. <laughs> I understand, but I'm just trying to make an example here. Because corn is supposed to be the representation of honor through combat, except he yeah. takes it to the extreme because a lot of corn's uh, followers are bloodthirsty as all hell, but he's yeah. supposed to represent honor, combat, and things like that. You know? Listen, he, like Slanesh I said, is access through pleasure, but. Yeah, originally it's supposed to be a god of pleasure, but then it's to the max of excess. Bag of retcons. It is yeah, and seeing just knowledge and trickery, but he kind of takes it to the point where he's just an idiot about it. And oh. a nerd who plays Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> and then there's Malal. Everyone remembers Malal. Totally. Hello, Colin. Well, I'll come back all the time and not understanding what license it is. Uh, and you know, chaos is pretty corruptive. For every time yeah. in the lore a major character gets corrupted and you go, uh, why did you choose to side with the forces of what is clearly evil incarnate, you fool? There's a million off-camera bozos who either had no choice, were misled, or just fell for reasons that weren't stupid. If you were thrust... Yeah, unfortunately, that is something that does happen. Uh, I feel so bad for Volgrim. In the shoes of the average yeah. fellow in Warhammer, be it from 40k, AOS, or Fantasy, you'd probably fall to chaos if you came face to face with it. I don't but feel bad for Potorabo, but I feel bad for Fulgrim. Because of the power it grants you. And all other things considered equal, you've got quite the list of gods to choose from. Obviously, uh, if you're in a region of, say, Norska, that's only inhabited by Cornate worshippers, then yeah, you're at the very least not ending up following Slum. Funny enough, when I was playing Total Warhammer, I tried Norska. They're a pretty interesting faction. Their whole thing is about uniting all the clans. One of the clans is led by a troll who I think is named Throg. Fantasy <laughs> sounds so interesting. Funny enough, he was supposed to work to uh, work together with uh, I for I think his name is Sigvald, who is a Slaneshi worshipper who's all about being a pretty boy. And think about him having to work together with a troll. <laughs> Of course he tries to kill him. Well, Nash, yeah, not unless you want to get beheaded. But let's say you've got the yeah. choice between any and all of the Chaos Gods to worship. Who are you going with? This isn't going to be listing who's the best choice, because the Chaos Gods don't really have a best choice. They all yeah, they suck. Have the strongest among them, Corn, but the best is up for you to decide. So the I'll do my best to see but, if I can uh, figure out which Chaos think, God you want. In terms of strength, is relative in terms of Chaos Gods, because... Because uh, they all have their own little tricks and trades to. to being most of them. Retcon or not. Just the also, worst. Also, this has nothing to do with army Sorry. building. Right. This is all purely what sort of things person might have that brings them towards one chaos god or the uh, other. Uh, Yet before we go on, consider what something. Is it? In Warhammer, the chaos gods are a brilliant oh, piece of lore. Boy, oh, he's using brilliant again. They keep You've already seen work. this, so we and can skip that. Deal for you. I'm at least gonna let him go through it a little again, bit. Bowl two. Let's start with the big four, the ones that bring GW all the money and therefore mm. get more than zero attention. Might as well start with the hardest hitter out of all of them, 
Cool. Uh, Chaos God of Blood, Skulls, War, and Murder. Pretty He's much. pretty self-explanatory. He wants you to get out there, do your best, and see if you I can... I mean, Korn is the simplest one to explain. His men are quite literally just... There's literally a, a meme in the community of... Oh, the, these are the list of Cornate Maskers. Uh, what was the saying? This is the list of Cornet Maskers. This list is incomplete. You can help by expanding it. <laughs> Break your own personal... Like I said, Corn is literally just the god of honor through combat. Even if it means killing the whole village of people because I don't yeah. know Corn said so. Quite literally, as Corn says, he will never stab you in the back. He will just stab you in the face again and again until your face no longer resembles a face. Record for manslaughter. Corn's right. purview is all about violence in its most brutal and honest form. It's yeah. probably pretty simple to figure out if you'd want to fall to Corn worship. If you spend three hours a day every day at the gym, he's probably your go-to chaos god. Pretty three much. hours a day working out, that is. I don't mean if you're the kind of person to go to the gym for three hours, but spend two and a half of them talking and sitting on the machines. Oh, you know, you the know. worst kind of person at the gym. Yeah. Yeah, the person who literally hogs the machines just so you can't use them. Or for some reason wants to take selfies in front of the machines and act like they're actually working. ...that you want an excuse to vent, Carnal have your... I'm not angry. You're angry. ...your back more than any other. You want to kill people, Corn wants you to kill people. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. He's also the chaos god you want if you're not really into all that mutation crap chaos normally brings. Now, he might still mutate you a bit or turn you into a chaos spawn if you screw up. He's not a yeah. nice guy. But out of all the other choices among the big four, he's the one who will mess with your body the least. Your muscle mass will... Um, will increase by a factor of I mean, 10, that's but true. You'll turn into a walking bag of sickness, a tentacle monster, or whatever the hell Slanesh feels is the kinkiest thing that day. Uh, but there's also some other things I, that might draw someone. For some reason, Slanesh gives her work gives her worshippers crab hands. I don't know why. And tentacles. Well, I understand the tentacles. But yeah. I don't know. Excess or something. Corn worship. If you're yeah. an honorable sort of fellow and only want the best of fights, corn's probably your best best. Pretty much. Now GW has kind of moved away from corn being honorable, and even back in ye olden days of Warhammer, there was oh, still yeah. a Godric and Felix story where a corn ate champion. Uh, Godric and Felix is a story I feel like you should check out if you ever want to check out Warhammer Fantasy Fable, because they are a fun story. It's basically this runaway trade prince and this dwarven slayer. Who go on adventures all the time. Yeah, I heard that um, the only people that really would follow a slayer is either another slayer or just someone looking to tell a story. Uh, basic slayers are always going into combat, so yeah. Uh, he basically... I forget who... Uh, Felix basically got drunk with Gotrick once and said that he would be his story chronicler. And he's a dwarf, so he's its not like he's going to take that lying down, even if the man was drunk. I do think it's funny, because to provide understanding about this specific Slayer, he is the greatest of them all, because no matter how many fights he in, he does not die, and that bothers him. It bothers him that much about him. It's more like, how should I put this? He's not the best Slayer, because if he was the best Slayer, he would already be dead. No, I know. That's what I find so oh. funny is yeah. he's a great warrior, but he's a piss poor slayer because he can't <laughs> die to save his life, which is funny because that's his whole point of his life is to die in combat, but he can't. Champion was being explicitly <laughs> told that the only thing that would give her yeah. demonhood was to murder her daughter. She didn't succeed, by the way, in case the words Agatric and Felix story didn't tip you off. But yeah. clearly Korn isn't opposed to you taking an axe to the weak every now and then. But that being said, I think there's Pretty a way much. to Pretty much, she doesn't really victory. see... He doesn't really care who you take an axe to as long as it's to the face and not to the back. Lore. If you're faced right. with the choice between obliterating an orphanage or fighting an enemy army's champion, you gotta fight the champion first. You don't get evil dessert before you finish your evil Brussels sprouts. That was a, what the hell way to put it? But it's <laughs> technically correct. You can have all the honorable fights you want, but if all you want is to kill anything near you, then you can eventually do that too. He's also the chaos god you want if you're big on doing things yourself, or have a lot of pride in your own abilities. Uh, Corn will be more yeah. than happy to give you the strength to kill- He's kind of like a god of pride in terms of strength. 
example, a giant, but you gotta prove you can do it to begin with. He rewards those who are willing and able to prove themselves as mighty warriors, so don't take Korn as a shortcut to power. He doesn't like that. But if you're willing to put him yeah. to work, he'll have your back. Just that. look at Valkia the Bloody. She technically failed to reach her end goal, but he was so astounded by her ferocity, he brought her back as his own personal Valkyrie. He's also not huh. super treacherous for a Chaos God, although admittedly that's partially on a technicality. Corn followers aren't going to stab you in the back when you aren't looking. They will, however, <laughs> kick your teeth in when you are looking. Team killing is by no means frowned upon, but unlike some other Chaos Gods, you'll at least see it coming. Mm. Corn doesn't care either way because the blood will flow either way, but if True. you want treachery to at least be as honest as it possibly can I be... I do remember a saying of a world eater who uh, was talking to a medic... And uh, he w he basically had a bunch of his fingers in his hand, and said, "Fix it," <laughs> because he uh, because he uh, got into a fight with another world eater, and the world eater had bit off his fingers, so he punched him in the stomach really hard and knocked his teeth out. <laughs> God. Oh. Brother. The problem was the actual apothecary had been killed. Of course it was. Of course the apothecary <laughs> had been killed. It's a wonder these guys don't just end up in brawls and end up dying before they even reach the battlefield. Can I just say this about the world eaters and apparently how on Angron's uh prize ship, like this the ship he was given by the Emperor. Uh -huh. I don't like the I don't like the captain of the ship because everyone apparently sees her as a victim and I'm just like no no she's not she was she was a pain in the ass when she was alive due to her pride she's now she's now a warp entity like like she's literally a machine like so apparently uh current lore she was in the in the warp for so long she literally merged with the um with the machine spirit on her ship and everyone's uh -huh. just like Man, I feel so bad for her, and I'm like, y'all just simping over a lady. Shut up. Yeah, yes. sounds about right. You want the reason I hate her is because she let her pride literally rule over her. Yes, she was strong and cool in her own right, but she let her pride rule over her, and she killed the last of the only good, loyal, freaking um, oh. world eaters that tried okay, to escape. Okay, now that makes me hate her too, because I like. Yes, because. Yeah, so because there was literally trying to escape, and she was going to quote-unquote leave with them. No, she destroyed them, and the only reason was because her pride would not let her show weakness, and she was the captain of the ship, and it's just like, you I can't... hate everything about you, and I hate everything about the fact that people actually see you as a victim. Yeah. This is what you deserve. Yeah, considering she killed... Like, the thing of a captain is, it's not that your men can't show cowardice, it's that you can't show cowardice and are supposed to go down with the ship. Not the other way around. Yeah. And now she's like a weird ghost entity, and people think... And people love her more, and I'm just like, you're all stupid. People I'm sorry. Be this last one might be a bit of a stretch, yeah. so hear me out. Okay. Imagine you're an engineer, be it a tech priest or some factory worker from Nuln. You're pretty weak by the standards of Warhammer, aren't terribly skilled at combat, and overall probably won't last long in a fight. Okay. But on the other hand, you just revolutionized a new form of weaponry that will lead to millions dying in the name of Korn. Congratulations, you've just scienced your way to demon princehood. Korn is I don't really think it works like that. He's more of fight in the front kind of guy. Like, it's kind of why Cornate Berserkers don't really use ranged weaponry. Yeah, to my understanding, to gain uh, Korn's favor, you have to prove yourself as a warrior. You literally... You don't have to cause massacres, you just have to prove your strength through combat. Yeah. Like, have to put yourself in every deadliest encounter, and if you're about to die and somehow pull through... I'm 100% sure that is how Korn will start looking at you, because he yeah. saw you pull through, like, a thing that was going to kill you. Yeah, I hope... He's it... simple in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, out of all the Chaos Gods, he's the most simple one. God of War, remember, yeah. in all its forms. I mean, he is a God of War, but he doesn't skull. exactly take the line of, like, say, someone that uses a bunch of chemical weapons. 
hold their own. No, that, that's nerve. Well, yes, he does yeah. prefer to get them the old fashioned way. He's not going to complain if you use a bit of brains instead of brawn. I like to think uh... of it this way You've proven that you have the devotion to Korn necessary to take life on a massive scale in his name. If you need a bit of a boost to be able to do it manually, he'll probably approve. And if nothing else, Azariah Kairos was going to ascend a demon princehood with an exterminatus. What? Clearly, he's content with you using weapons of mass destruction. Wait, what? Really? Uh, uh... Okay, this makes things even more confusing. Because go... of all the Chaos Gods, Korn is probably the most simple one to understand. But will you, give, you give someone a fair fight if you win. I mean, sure, you can use bronze or brains. I'm sure about that. But it usually has to be, scale. you know. Well, next, Zeech. As one... long as you fight your opponent fair and square, kill them, then that's it for Korn. That's literally it. You, He yeah. doesn't care how you win as long as it's fair and not... Oh, hey, I backstab them with trickery, because that, yeah. that Zinch is crap. Yeah, that's Zinch. Chaos God of Magic, Trickery, and Scheming. Also oh, hope, yeah. but only sort of. He's the. Sp I have never heard him being called the God of Hope, of all things, I'll be honest. If that's a thing, I think that's a thing from old lore, as far as I know. Or it's a thing Probably. that happened that I don't know about. Either way. If you tell a cornfire to solve a problem with their head, they will just headbutt it. Pretty much. Smartest chaos god by far, and arguably only hasn't won because he doesn't want to. If Zinch ever fully won, I think he, he hasn't won because he's too far insane with his own plans that he just can't. Like, it's basically having a thousand plans go off, and they only. He's not even sure which one is right. Himself shortly after, because there'd be no one left to scheme against. He'll turn that your is a good point also, soup. though. He'll turn your allies into magical soup. He'll turn you into magical soup. Then undo it and tell you to get back out there and start plotting. Unsu that actually does sound very much like Zeech. Surprisingly, if you want to throw lightning out of your hands, then Zeech is the choice for you. And for every corny uh. who goes, that's unmanly, you're cheating, consider that it's not your fault they chose the Chaos God who gets upset when they start slinging spells. Zeech oh is yeah, that is a thing. Korn doesn't really like magic casters. Yeah, no, he, he just prefers uh, pure strain in brawn, that's it. No yeah. magic. Followers are no magic not allowed. the strongest wizards around, then at least some of the most prolific. Once you sign up with him, you're on the fast track to magical power on but, a match. Uh, Whereas other races have to spend time and effort mastering their magic potential, you've just been given an all-access pass to 8th level Pretty spell. much. Have fun with them. Also Turn usually fire. Turn mutated frog and take his place. The possibilities are as endless as the strands of fate that Zeech has almost complete control uh, of. The world with his power is your mutated, tentacle-filled oyster. I don't need to think about Zeech that. Zeech is for those of you who really like to gamble. He may very well decide <laughs> to give you completely unlimited power with zero caveats. Get the power of one of that his greater demons for free. Zinch doesn't care. You'll undoubtedly cause some- That is actually true. He would probably do that for shits and giggles. Just to see if you make a bunch of change. Right. Like, if you- Because if you're a big schemer and he gives you that kind of power, he would do it for shits and giggles just to see what kind of schemes you come up with. Like, he's quite literally the per the kind of Chaos God who will give you something, then wait and watch. And either you will flub over yourself and he will laugh, or you'll create mass, mass destruction and he will still laugh. It's kind of why the only reason that one uh, Thousand Sons character is still around. Oh yeah, Ottoman. I, I forgot his name often. Uh, yeah, it's the only reason Ottoman is still allowed to do what he does, because Zinch is like... Yeah, I'm pre Zinch has pretty much told him, or has stated... No matter what you do, you're never going to break the curse. So I'm just going to let you go around because I think it's funny. That's it's, it. It's quite literally the rat in the maze. And he's he yeah. knows he's never going to get out of the maze, but it's just funny to watch him go to him. From chaos, and yep, that's and just that's what he wants out of you. On the other hand, he's also mm -hmm. the most likely chaos god to turn his followers into horrid, mutated monstrosities. Pretty much. It depends on how screwing you over fits into one of his master schemes, or if he just feels like it at any given moment. Yeah. If you like your odds with that sort of thing, go with Z. He's basically the, the gambling god. And every single meticulous detail down to the letter are also the kind of people Zinch likes, with the added benefit right. of his being the slightly problem less likely with that, to screw though, over. is the house always wins, and Zinch is the house. Pretty much. There's only been a few times where he's lost, and he goes into a fervent... It's the only time we've seen Zeech really angry. Right. 
When you leave things up in the air, you're giving Zinch a free pass to rub his magical balls across your chin because he found it funny. But if all I didn't need to <laughs> have that <laughs> metaphor. He, he, he's not wrong, but I didn't need to hear it like that. All you do is pray to him and go, hey, Zinch, you're my watching guy, could you... Him. He, his analogies and a lot of what he says is very, it's very all over the top. <laughs> what did you expect? make me better at magic, then all you're really doing is yeah. giving him the singular chance to directly screw you over. Pretty Everything much. Everything else you do is entirely in oh, your hands. Brother. And while he may give you a few extra eyes that see into what should not be seen when you ask for better magic, that's a hell of a lot better thing than leaving your entire future up to his whims. Yeah. Now, granted, as a god of fate, everything you do might result in him screwing you over according to his whims, but at the very least, if you're specific in what you want and don't mm. ask for too much, he'll show you've got an independent mind. Zinch loves that kind of thing. Just ask Ahriman. Ahriman's uh. trying to break free of Zinch for 10,000 years. Hasn't worked. Zinch, if anything, considers him a greater champion of his than Magnus. But Zinch That's actually kind of fun funny, because Magnus is mostly broken, and Armin is the only one that's kind of moving around. So it could, it's basically put that Armin is the one causing the most change. Directly come down upon yeah, Armin, the thing, at least the in the thing sense of about repair. Magnus in current lore... He lost, well, basically, he, many of his shards, the good part of his shards, or his soul, have been either destroyed, lost the time, or given, or the main, like, the main shard of his soul, that's his honor and his uh, ability to do anything, is literally given to the Grey Knights for their chapter master. That? Which is apparently people specify, uh, not specify, but theorize that the reason Kaldor Drago is the way he is, is because he has the soul of a Primarch. That's why he's so invincible, but that's just, that's literally just a theory to, spe to, that's just a theory people go on with because a lot of people don't like the fact that he's kind of invincible when you think about it. Honestly, I will give the point that Lucius the Immortal is, a, is invincible and still no one likes him. Yeah, just, uh, that's just theories though. It's really up yeah. to what you subscribe, but maybe Taldor Draco's just good because he worked hard for it who knows possibly but he's in the warp right now so you never know <laughs> yeah you never know when you're in the warp placing his arms with bird feathers and turning the rest of him into a slug so you'll have that going for you yeah. show a little bit of free thinking and you'll prove to zinch that you're this is actually work. a thing that they do on the tabletop uh or um well the tabletop rpg those pink horrors that you saw in the picture uh huh? They will split into blue horrors. Basically, if you if there's like two on the field, if you kill them, they'll split into like four blue horrors. Sinch's group, Sinch's abilities and demons make no sense to me. It's for some reason always fire with him, magical fire too. Of course, too. if you're intellectually minded in ways that go beyond coming up with new methods of mass destruction, he's the god for you, plain and simple. Want to unravel the mysteries of the universe using the warp? because that's the kind of thing Zinch absolutely loves in a follower. Sure, the research might drive you completely insane, but that might just make you an even better researcher and or wizard. If you want no questions oh, left God. unasked or unanswered and were the kind of child who kept asking... The problem is that there's sometimes knowledge best let, left unknown. Yeah. And Zinch always takes... He takes advantage of the people that go, why can't I learn this? Or why shouldn't I learn this? He takes... Full advantage of those people. Because they're kind of dumb, even with how smart they are. Like Magnus, who's dumb and prideful, even from the start. Right. Asking why is the sun yellow and following up every answer your parents gave you with another question, Zinch is for you. Up next is Nurgle. Uh, life, death, decay, disease, and since entropy is a universal concept, technically everything ever. But he doesn't let it get to his head. He's a humble sort of guy who loves his followers and demons like family. Now you might be no. thinking that Nurgle is for those of you who are lazy. His whole creed is accepting what you are and just giving you a thing. They are kind of lazy. So surely being a lazy sack of shit is perfect in a Nurgle follower. But that's just not true. Nurgle doesn't preach laziness. He preaches acceptance of the situation you find yourself in. Maybe if stoic. If you hit rock bottom and then the floor caves in from under you, Nurgle tells you to accept it. Nurgle is for the stoic of us, those who come into work every day and just accept their lot in life for what it is. Ambition isn't what you want here, so if you're the kind of person who takes go with the flow, to mean accepting whatever life throws at you, then Nurgle is what you want. That being said, if hygiene is at the bottom of your to-do list, then you also want Nurgle. This, this is why I hate Nurgle so much. I am someone that feels dirty 
if I don't shower at least once a day. I feel dirty if I don't <laughs> do a bunch of stuff to clean myself. And he's like, Ugh. This isn't for any philosophical reasons. <laughs> like, I'm not a neat or germ freak, but still, it's a... Uh, uh, I hate Kugal and all of them. turn into incredibly disgusting sacks of disease and filth. Acceptance also apparently includes accepting you will smell like an anime convention for the rest of your life. The Everyone makes that joke, why do we all... But I can understand why it's there. You know what? I should get Minecraft soon so I can play with Somi. She might be a stinky raccoon, but she's not a worshipper of Nurgle, and I accept this. I only kneel before whatever god holds their coffee, chaotic evil style. <laughs> Grabs the boiling coffee by the cup. Oh no. Oh my god. And there's my friend Tyr, the plushy wolf. He is a good friend and also making a video game. He's also a fighting game player. So have fun meeting him, Petra, because he's actually really good at what he does. He's a god of disease, so it's fitting. Personally, I wouldn't go Nurgle for that reason alone. I wouldn't go near Nurgle with a 10-foot pole. Because he's probably <laughs> already made the 10-foot pole rot. That makes sense. <laughs> because quite frankly I am incredibly vain in very specific ways and I don't want to look or smell like that my whole life but yeah I can understand that I'm a little vain in my looks in terms of I like to keep my muscles that's why if I work out you just out. don't care and if you're willing to give yourself body and soul to the god of disease you probably don't Nurgle's your guy for something a bit less gross Nurgle is about the best chance you'll have oh great Petra's going on about the guilty gear Stuff. I think it's best to kind of just feel free to let Petro um, hyperfixate on what they hyperfixate and just go on with your existence. I'm asking my friend if they have Helldivers too right now. Wait for my jams as he wilts away. Honestly, I, what I should probably do is get Tyr, my friend Silent, and Petra together because they're all fighting game people and see what happens. I feel like they'll either become the best of friends or they will start a three-way fighting game tournament. <laughs> Have if you want to be in anything even remotely resembling a kind relationship with Chaos. Nurgle <sighs> loves his followers, and his greater demons are pretty jolly folk. Now, it's not perfect. There, Following so Nurgle can still result in you turning into a horrid mutant monstrosity, and again, your guts are going to be on the outside more often than they're on the inside. But by the standards of Chaos followers, Nurgle's your best bet to find some sort of peace with your fellow Chaos warriors. Corn might have an honorable warrior attitude, but... Oh dear. Unfortunately, Somi does not have Helldivers. Oh. Hmm. Eh. Anyway, there's an understanding that at any point you Sorry might... if I took too long with the reaction. I'm not I might post this video on YouTube fully. I don't know. I like pink uh pancreas no works and the reason why he's called that is because he has that one disease where well his pancreas doesn't really work. That I can't think of off the top of my head. That... I never looked at uh his username, so I did not know that. Yes, he needs insulin. Interesting kill your fellows because the blood god needs blood and it's been a yeah. bit too long since you've been able to raid someone. And he needs skulls on his skull throw. Zinch actively approves of you dicking his other followers over and Slanesh approves of it as well in a much more literal manner. I did Nurgle, not! at the very least doesn't explicitly approve of you messing with your fellows for no better reason than I feel like it, which when selling your soul to hell is most certainly a positive to consider. And of course, in the Warhammer settings pain is a pretty frequent thing. All the violence and starvation and oh, general ten setups, why? will likely be hurting as often as not. We'll join it when we'll do it after the reaction because like I don't want to. won't even notice. If I post this to YouTube, I don't want to, you know, like interrupt it too much. I feel like you say you want to keep your muscles. That that's why I have this barbell behind me. Only guy muscle, man. Anyway.
that, like I said before, your insides may as well... I think I worked out enough at work lifting all those heavy objects. Outsides. Sure, the moment you're cut off from chaos, you instantly feel all the pain of your body rotting that you'd otherwise not be feeling. But hey, just don't get cut off from Grandfather Nurgle's love. If you're a bit of a nihilist, I refuse he's to call also it the love. choice for you. After all, decay is only a natural part of life. Even Why his champion the uh, demon Primarch doesn't like Nurgle. Plan. That being said, if you're the edgy life has no meaning, I'm 13 years old. To be fair, his, his, uh, his uh, Primarch demon champion, he, he's a pain in the ass, so... He doesn't like anything. He, he's a hypocrite. Let's just go with him. I know. Because Onagai Muscle has a rhythm. So I do like the song of Onagai Muscle, but I listen to a lot of different songs while working out. I've only really worked out my upper body, but I don't really go to the gym. I just kind of work out at home. If I had more time, I would be going to the gym every single day. And if I had the money. <laughs> kind of nihilist, then Nurgle's probably not for you. I mean more nihilism in the sense of embracing the inevitable end of all things with a smile on your face, which might not actually be nihilism, but it's been several years since I've been know. in an English class, and I can't come up with a better word for it. I can and understand. lastly, are you a bitter asshole? Do you want everyone else to suffer like you do? Then Nurgle's perfect for you too. Spreading oh yeah. Nurgle's love involves spreading <laughs> horrible, horrible diseases to everyone around you. So if that's your thing, then sign up with Papa Nurgle as soon as you can. He may be a loving god, but he's a loving god of disease and filth. And if yeah. he wasn't willing to accept bitter people amongst his followers, then Mortarian wouldn't be a demon primarch. And honestly, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. To wrap off the big four, Slanesh, yes. chaos god of excess and pleasure, and god I would join if I had a choice in the matter. Don't be I wouldn't be surprised by that. I play Eldar. They made Slanesh. Not the craft world is granted. They were the ones who ran. Oh away. yeah, he's a big Eldar guy. For some reason, he just loves the Eldar and will make any excuse for them. I know I hate it. <laughs> you hate it? Yes. I don't understand why people like elves. Elves are evil. You do you mean the space <laughs> elves or the normal elves? Yes. I will admit that is I, my only answer. I kind of like their design and their grave constructs a bit. The ones who did make Slamesh, but the seed is still there. Dead to me, Slamesh man. has a lot <laughs> dead to me. more things going for her than just feel good. Of course, in saying uh, that, if you want to not just ignore pain, but feel good, Slanesh is for you. Slanesh yeah. doesn't just want you to feel good. She who thirsts wants you to feel great. Better than ever before. Slanesh wants you to only feel yeah. the best sensation the galaxy has to offer. So if you want to find the one source of pleasure in your joining up with demons, this is your best and I'd only. rather not, thank you. A lot of people you. think Slanesh is only sex, drugs, and rock and roll. This isn't true, but Slanesh is also about those things. So if yes, you want she to look is. like a rock star, then you want Slanesh. But like I said, there's more to it than That's that. why she has Slanesh the noise is Marines. In all things, and not only those that are strictly speaking pleasurable. Any of the sins you can imagine fall under Slanesh if you yeah. take them far enough, even something like sloth. Let's say you want to laze around all day and do nothing. A normal person would turn off their phones and not check their email for a while. A yeah. dedicated follower of Slanesh would kill every single person on the planet so no one can ever bother them again. That's the kind of thing you get with Slanesh. Anything you can think of- Ah, uh, that kind of works, yeah. Slanesh feels like where it's just pleasure of doing whatever the hell you want to the point of just not giving a fuck about anyone. E. Anyway. Taken to an excessive level will please her. Any sort of thing you can imagine taken to a level that makes the average person a bit concerned is what Slanesh is about. This oh, can throw be this the bear roll the galaxy has ever seen. Charming. Throw this bear roll of charm. Or, or more out there sounding stuff like why Oh, Charmin. That's what you mean. The <laughs> throw the bear Don't roll of Charmin for You know Charmin is a is a type of toilet paper, right? It's fable. Yes. If anything's taken to excess, and if you're a firm believer of there being uh, no such thing as too much of a good thing in whatever form that takes, then you I'd want rather Slanesh. not think of Slanesh most of Slanesh's followers. You if you want absolutely zero forms of moral code in your damned life. What Slanesh wants out of her followers is yeah. to do whatever the hell they want, without any regard for anyone else. 
have a family you need to provide for? To hell with that. Go get drunk with beer made out of every drug known to man and animal blood. If anyone uh, protests, add their blood to the drink. Under Slanesh, you are beholden to no one but I'm, yourself, no. so live life to the fullest. And there's something no. to be said about that, truth be told. It's completely horrific, but if you're going yeah. to choose to sell your soul to the forces of hell, you may as well go the full mile. It's and usually that... snakes, lizards, and whatnot, and also crab hands. I don't know how crab hands are related, don't ask me. Yeah, I don't get it either. I, uh, yeah. I... I don't- I shouldn't honestly question what Slanesh is, she probably did for just to be kinky. Point any moral line in the sand you draw is completely arbitrary. Oh what, you'll kill anyone Also, tomorrow who is- and... we'll play, uh, Dawn of War, but it's going to be- Hello, Link Bros. But it's going to be the expansions, which the first one is a Necron one. Sacrifice their souls to demons, but a little bit of cock and ball torture is just too much. I Get off your high horse, you cornate snob. Every follower of Chaos is damned. Slaneshis are just the ones with the stones to admit it. You oh yeah, I forgot that Korn especially hates Slanesh. I don't remember why, but he does. Which is why he his followers are usually kill any Slaneshi that they see. I mean, all the Chaos Gods hate each other, but Korn hates Slanesh especially. Might also be drawn to Slanesh for a variety of minor reasons, including but not limited to. You're the opposite of a Nurgle follower and love uh, to the point that you'll I'm going to look away from that because I don't want to see good. that. You think Korn is completely overrated and wish him nothing but death. I you want hate to go it. fast as hell because Slanesh is all about speed on the battlefield, and speed is in itself a form of act. Oh, yeah! She's basically all about the pleasure center of the brain, basically. Excess. And of course, you Please that can transfer want to vor elves. And as a last Wait, reason, what? we draw on a Slanesh body modification. Now you might hear oh, yeah. them go, oh, Pancreas, I didn't know you were my 80-year-old grandfather telling me I'll go to hell if I look at a tattoo parlor. No, I'm saying look at a picture of a demonette, and if that's your kind of thing, that's what you'll get out of Slanesh. Slanesh knows that if you really want to get extreme with your feelings, then yeah, your crap boring hands. human body isn't enough. So if you don't it's care basically like, like that one doctor from Rapture. Total, then here you go. Now there's the big four wrapped up, but we aren't out of chaos gods. We're going old school for the rest, so if you're a complete hipster and want to find something that no one else would think to pick, listen closely. First Ready? up next is Malal. I don't like Malal, but unlike Korn and Bretonia, it's got nothing to do with him or his lore. I don't know why he hates Bretonia. I think it's because they have a elf god that basically likes them more than the elves. Oh. Yeah. That's the they worship the lady, which is technically an elvish god, but they left basically the elves to uh yeah. More insistent. Oh, that's what you mean by uh, I don't. I hope that's not it. I hope you're wrong, Common. But hey, base that he'll ever make a major reappearance. Malau, do you remember what Malau is the chaos god of? Uh, nothingness. Uh, I think. I think it was pure hatred. Okay. When he was designed, his designer was a freelance artist in the UK, and therefore he oh. had to do his own work once he and GW separated. From my understanding of things, GW very much could still use him. They just have to pay royalties to his creator. Which they will Of course, won't. that would mean GW wouldn't have an iron grip on their IP and would have to pay money to a third party. Which they hate. Isn't happening. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I don't think I will be. And yet people keep going, Malal's coming back, look, he's they teased not. him, or guys, Malal's always been if, here, just look. And if he's ever coming back, the only way he's coming back is he's getting a complete name change and change of design. Right. To skirt around all the, you Point know. The Sons of Malice. Which, to be fair, does seem a bit of a cheeky reference to Malal. And to stop yeah. being fair, you know damn well GW isn't going to do anything substantial with him. But that rant is entirely unrelated to the video. Talk. I actually appreciate the newer writers that are actually moving the plot forward. Thank God. Like, I get it's supposed to be stagnation, war, death, and, uh, but stories can still happen. Like, so I'm going to move on now. Things what can still change. What kind of traits in a person makes them a good choice to choose Malal worship? Well, let's say you absolutely hate chaos. You think it totally sucks, it's the worst thing ever, and you just want to get rid of every other chaos worshipper on the planet. You, however, are also a chaos worshipper, but you also don't mind being a massive hypocrite since you're worshipping a chaos god. If you don't mind that bit of mental gymnastics, you'll fit in just fine with Malal. 
He not only targets other Chaos Gods, but since he tends to go for a quality over quantity approach, that means that even the weakest oh. Mars Worshipper is going to be heads and tails above most other Chaos Gods. That would make followers. In fact, this that would make sense even... because his uh, his follower base would be much smaller. Out of right. You know, even easier path to power than Zeech for that very reason. While yes, the likelihood of being chosen by Malal is pretty low, remember that this whole premise is based around you being able to pick whoever you want. That is also true. If you want the true. easiest path to power, Malal's your best bet. He's also for you if you want some variety in your life, arguably even more so than Korn when it comes to who you're fighting. Because he wants you to fight other Chaos Champions, that means you've got at least Oh, oh yeah, other this is of... this is the guy from, uh, it's a weird thing, but... I forget the name of this game. It's Final Fantasy Sinner's Paradise, I think. It's apparently a prequel to the first Final Fantasy game, which doesn't make any sense, or so I've heard. Yeah, I don't know either, to be honest. That's crazy. Do you remember the trailer where the guy said, I'm going to kill Chaos? That's what the... Yeah? Yeah, that's from this game. Interesting demonic champions to fight and of course as a chaos god you'll also be fighting mortal champions plenty often so there's no need to worry about running out of enemies to fight and really that's about all i'd say is important stuff for a malal worshiper if you'd like me to stretch i guess you can say that if you're a big fan of bringing up things that are never going to happen you can say you'd be perfect oh as a god. worshiper of malal of course games workshop also brought back both the squats and warhammer fantasy so take my bitching with a grain of salt Never yeah. say never, after all. Now, there's actually a fair few more entities that could qualify as being minor chaos gods, like this goober called the Screaming Godchild from what? Malice Darkblade. And by Age of Sigmar... Arc Screaming? I've never heard of them, but they look creepy and I don't like them. They remind me of the faceless doll thing, or the illusionist from Yu-Gi-Oh! Archeon also arguably qualifies as a minor one. Wait, Archeon? Some Slanesh worshippers want him to be the new Slanesh. Oh but yeah, that was the third camp that I never told you about, Fable. Apparently there's a camp of Slanesh worshippers that... Uh, yeah, there's a third camp of Slanesh worshippers that want him to be the new Slanesh. That's gross. It is. To be frank, I don't feel like going through 50 Chaos Gods that only exist in a single paragraph somewhere. We're just going to go with the yeah. highlights of the ones I found most interesting, starting with Hashut. Hashut is Hashut. the Chaos God of Tyranny. Not oh. industry, since that's Vashtor, who is incidentally not a Chaos God and therefore not being covered here, but Tyranny. His main follower is the Chaos Dwarves. Yeah, he's the leader of the Chaos Dwarves. I don't know why the Slaneshis want Archeon to be the new Slanesh. Do you, I don't find logic with them. I don't find logic with them either. They're chaos worshippers. They have no logic to them. Just happen to be dwarfs and are therefore very industrious. Oh yeah. You shoot if you want to be in charge of everyone around you. By dominating and making everyone around you your slaves, and no, not that way, you Slaneshi freak, you please Hashut. Send thousands to work in the coal mines for your dark plans. That sort of thing is what makes Hashut happen. Yeah, He's that's also basically the guy Hashut. for you if you're into ancient Mesopotamia. And I mean... Yeah, their designs are ancient Mesopotamian and industry is all their things. Really into ancient Mesopotamia. Bowls, tall hats, Babylonian-looking appearances. The regular dwarves don't look anything like that, so I assume it's either some sort of <laughs> sacred attire to Hashut, or he just likes Probably when his much. followers wear that kind of stuff. Lastly, Hashut is for you if you want the least likelihood out of the maul of a Chaos God dicking you over. He doesn't really seem to do that sort of thing with the Chaos huh. Dwarves. Honestly, the worst thing that happens to the Chaos Dwarves is that when they use magic, they turn to stone if they do it for too Yeah, that's just what Fable brought up. That they... Yeah. That they turn to stone if they do it too long. Too long. And that might just be what dwarfs do when they use magic. They were designed to not only be unable to, but to call magic with their mere presence. There's even a quote from a chaos huh. dwarf decrying the ancestor gods as traitors, with the implication that Hashut has never betrayed them. That's so long as crazy you do your thinking. thing to make him happy, you'll probably be just fine with Hashut worship. He doesn't seem like the kind of chaos entity to dick any of his followers over for fun. I mean, or hell, give them too many gifts and cause them to overload with mutations. Ugh. While evil, it seems that all the relationships that Hashut has are purely beneficial to both parties. So you I mean, he is the god of tyranny, which tyranny doesn't necessarily mean just dicking over. It means rule overall. You got that going for you if you worship him. Up next is Nakoho. Nakoho is pretty simple. He's the minor chaos god of disbelief. As a minor chaos... Oh yeah, I told you about this one. Yes, he did. Uh, Nakoho is literally the god of unbelief. 
Which is such a strange thing to have a god of. I don't understand how that's possible. <laughs> he is dumb. That's all I know. Scott, he can very occasionally show up in the mortal world. And when oh. he does, he's a short, slightly fat dude who constantly has a goofy grin on his face. <laughs> There's only one reason you would want to worship Nikoho, and that's atheism. If you simply do not care about any of the gods that exist in the world, worship Nikoho. He requires nothing of his followers, and quite frankly, wishes any that do exist would just go away. <laughs> he sounds like a hermit god. <laughs> he's quite literally anyone that follows him, he says, go away. <laughs> It does sound like a hermit. His followers are both everyone and no one. Theoretically, he might want you to undermine other cults, since he very rarely works to make other religions look less credible, but he doesn't actually care enough to make you do it. Well, oh. I believe this story is about Nakoho. It could also be about the next minor god, so I'm going to put this story here between the two of them. I found the story a while ago, but couldn't refine it while I was writing the script, and I don't remember where I found it to begin. Oh, I just so got just follow. Mind, Thank you, Donut, for following. The next minor god. Anyways, it's in a supplement for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay when you find the temple of one of these lads. You can I don't absolutely know, wreck I don't know why it cut off mid, uh, thing. It's just like, fuck, and then it stopped. I, I don't know why. Oh, Petra, you won't stop talking. I know, he keeps, he's not, Petra's one of those people that gets a fixation on something and doesn't stop. Get if you want, whereupon he shows up and congratulates you for doing it. In a supplement okay. for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, when you find the temple of one of these lads. Okay, a while let's... ago, but couldn't refine it while I was writing the script, okay, and I so don't let's remember look. where I found it to begin with. So just keep in mind it could be talking about Zuvasin, the next minor god. Anyways, it's in a supplement for Warhammer Fantasy okay, here Roleplay, we go. when you find the temple of one of these lads. You can absolutely wreck it if you want, whereupon he shows up and congratulates you for doing it. But... <laughs> that actually sounds about right. The Chaos God of Unbelief tells you, Thank you for wrecking my shrine. I didn't want it there. Mac, I'm going to become the Chaos God of Unbelief, so I want you to go away now. <laughs> you can't. This is hermit. my stream. Go, go away. This is my stream now. <laughs> you can't just take over my stream and my... This is my area. Fable, you can't push me down. I made you, and I can unmake you. Listen, I am now the... I am now the Mech Wolf. I want you to leave, Imposter. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can't just take my name. That's not how this works. You're not even a wolf. You're a I'm... matted wolf. I am the Chaos God of Unbelief. I can totally take your name. I'm... <laughs> That's yes. not how that works. That's, how it... That's totally how it works. Now go away. <laughs> But since he's a chaos god, he technically can't just let you get off scot-free, so he tells you you have to build him a new one. It is overwhelmingly likely he won't even bother to check what you built, and Co even if common, he does, he's almost- I am now the owner of the stream, so you need to go away too. So. No, that's not how that works. Shoosh. Shoosh. You're not Shoosh your chaos. lovely face right there. <laughs> anyway, as he was saying, basically he says, since he's a god, he's like, eh, I can't technically- and not get angry at you, so you have to rebuild the shrine that you destroyed. Certainly gonna just go, good enough, even if you've done nothing but put up a sign that says, I hate you, or something like that. <laughs> Very f So he literally doesn't care, but he's like, eh, at least do something for me. Funny. Very unfortunate. I can't remember which of these two gods this is for. That's what I get for not bookmarking things I find online. Anyways, Zuvasin. Zuvasin is the god of things going wrong. He loves dicking over other chaos gods, and really anyone with anything resembling a plan. Wait, he's the god chaos god of things going wrong, so he's the god of bad luck? Oh god. Like, this... yeah... I mean, I have this bad luck weird. in buckets. I've been wondering when my good luck will come around. Fable, you know what? As the chaos god of unbelief, you can have my bad luck. How about that? You can have all that. What are you talking about? I'm Mechwolf. Now you need a shush. <laughs> Leave, sir. <laughs> this is weirder than the time Platy pretended to be me. Listen, unlike Platy, I'm gonna do it right, alright? What do you mean, do it right? I don't know. He's like I'm the confused, red, everyone. He only exists to ruin things people it's have planned, okay. but rather... Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this either, so... Yeah. 
Yeah. Whatever form he takes, he's always laughing because he's a prick. In fact, you know what kind yeah. of person would become a follower of Zuvison? A prick. Just a complete <laughs> asswipe. Someone who just wants to watch the world burn for no productive reason whatsoever. Yeah, if you're like following the chaos god of things going bad, you're just someone that wants to cause things going bad. Soever. If you've ever unironically posted an image of the Joker with some me versus world quote on it, or you're just a complete dick waffle, worship Zuvison. He quite literally doesn't stop anyone from worshiping him and getting power from him, because he is very confident he can find a way to screw them over eventually. Probably. Coming close to the end now, we have the Chaos Gods of Law and or Order. Okay. They are Arianka, Alumnius, and Sulcan. Arianka is supposedly a goddess of discipline. So, three Chaos Gods in one? But all we really saw of her was being trapped in a crystal coffin because Zinch was scared of her. Caleb Dark. That would make sense that the God of Change is scared of the God of, well, Order, because Order sometimes involves stagnation. That's dark with two A's yep. because he's extra edgy. Champion of Malal was supposed to do stuff with her, and then that whole IP thing I talked about earlier happened. And ah, so it's another IP thing. So she's just locked in a crystal coffin forever. Oh, there's nothing with Arianka. Worship here if you're either a very disciplined person in life or really like your afternoon naps, because all she does is sleep. As for oh, Alumnius, wow. he's a god of the purest light who turns anyone he looks at into unchanging light. He's order oh. taken to its most extreme form. Oh, he's literally the color gray then. He, like I said before, he is the unchanging thing that Zeech should probably fear, honestly. Yeah, mate. So Ultramarines will really f fall for her for being asleep. Oh, for discipline, you mean. If he was supreme, then there would be complete unending stasis. Like uh -huh. Nagash, but somehow even more boring. Nagash's end goal is boring stasis unending, by the way, not his actions and plans. Those are very fun and horrific. Worship Alumnius if you wish everyone else would just shut the hell up and stop talking forever, but not in a murdery sort of way. <laughs> but not in a murdery sort of way. <laughs> Somehow it feels worse than a murdery sort of way. Well, it's it's the kiddish kind of, you know, like censorship sort of way. Where, you know how 4Kids used to do this thing where instead of... What's the right word? Instead of you dying, you were sent, you're sent to a hell dimension instead. And that makes it worse. Not better. Worse. Because you're now suffering eternally. though. And finally, Sulcan. Sulkan is a god of justice and the law, in a Judge Dredd kind of way. Oh. He's got a surprising amount going for him, truth be told. The first reason to choose Sulkan as your patron is if you want the law to be upheld to the point that you will actively shoot anyone caught jaywalking. That explains the, drud the Judge Dredd sort of way. On the one hand, that's a bit much. However, on the other hand, I think anyone who rides a bike in the street has forfeited the right to live. So I <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I hate the bikers too, but oh my god it evens out. Whereas the gods like Sigmar and the Elven Pantheon are more of a middle ground between order and chaos, who would okay. lean closer to order, Sulkan and the rest of his fellow gods of order were gods of pure order. It's just Sulkan uh, is the coolest, so this reason to worship any of them goes to him. He's quite literally probably the god of inquisitors that Fable doesn't like. Him. Another reason someone might be drawn to well, Sulkan yeah. is that they have an intense hatred of chaos, but also don't want to be a total hypocrite. He's technically a chaos god, but that is a load-bearing technically. That is a weird kind of technically, because I honestly we don't know how chaos gods work most most of the time, other than them just being chaos gods and being the worst. Yeah. In old fantasy lore where he actually existed, it was implied he might have been the true power source behind gods like Sigmar, and he was the one who truly gave witch hunters their power. That's, um, he's the one who sends people out to wreck chaos shop, so if that's what you really want, then you want Sulkan. He's also a god of vengeance. While every chaos worshipper is probably going to be real big on vengeance, Sulkan's a god of it. It isn't an oh. eye for an eye, it's your life for a stubbed toe. This guy oh. is all about grudges at a level that would make dwarfs nod in moderate approval. So. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense for dwarves. There's a joke. <laughs> Let me tell you how spiteful these creatures, these dwarves are. There's literal joke events about not forgiving people with the dwarven faction in uh, Total Warhammer. It's literally just the same option you're given, which is the same thing. The Book of Grudges. Fable, you're going in the book. Who is this Fable you speak of? Oh my god, stop with that. <laughs> 
if the idea of someone doing you even remotely wrong brings you to the cusp of rage, so what is going die. on? As a final added nope. bonus, if any sort of mutation to your body throws you off no matter how small, you want Soul Can. He backs Witch Hunters, and Witch Hunters as a rule hate that kind of stuff, so I don't uh. really need to say anymore. And I saved the best Chaos God for last. Oh, who is it? Nuffold, Chaos oh. God of Blood Bowl. There's only one reason you would be <laughs> <laughs> No, that's the Chaos your life God of Blood Bowl. Is whether or not you're depressed dependent on whether or not Yeah, you're oh. Fable, Fable. Listen, Fable, it's not all about the game. It's not all about the Steelers. It's about football. Football. Let's go, Chicago Cubs. Let's go, Bears. Let's go, let's go. Team has a oh, shot at the Super Bowl. If so, then Nuffle is the god for you. We worship in Nuffle here, boys. God. We worship Nothing in Nuffle. Nothing can stand in his way, and the only thing he wants is football. Football is all there is. If you want to be the Jay Cutler of Chaos Champions, you want Nuffle. Maybe not Jay Cutler. I don't think he's even that good. I'm not much of a sports guy, but when I was younger, I was even less of one. All I remember about Jay Cutler is that he's also a type 1 diabetic, and my dad and Oh yeah, he's a type 1 diabetic. Those are the exact words. But yeah, don't you want to worship Nuffle Fable? Don't you want to join the football for the Blood Bowl? No, I don't. I really, I really don't want to worship the god of Blood Bowl. Force or Fable football. to be a DLC character in, in Blood Bowl. Oh my god, how am I going to be a DLC character in Blood Bowl? <laughs> oh no, you can join the Beastmen in their team. Aw, oh, but the Beastmen are like the worst faction because everyone, because GW said, how do we make everyone uncomfortable? Oh, I know, Chaos Beastmen. I don't want to join the Mets. They're uncomfortable. I'm sorry, but you join in the Mets. Yeah, it's all about the Mets, baby, the Mets. <laughs> I don't want to join the Mets. <laughs> complained about him a lot. Hey, type 1 diabetic in the NFL, though. That's pretty kick-ass. The moral of the story is that if you aspire to be a champion of Nuffle, please don't take inspiration from the Chicago Bears. It astounds me that one of the founding teams of the NFL is so incredibly bad at football. Over a hundred years and only one Super Bowl win. At least they're not the Chicago Cubs. And there's the kind of things I think should influence you. We all know that Fable's secretly just a worshipper of Nuffle. Which Chaos God to pick to worship? Like I said earlier, there are actually more beings that qualify as minor Chaos Gods, but to be frank, a lot of them aren't worth worrying about. It's if you're incredible. curious, it's not hard to find lists of every worship Chaos Nuffle, God online. It's for the good of, of everyone. Really super special Chaos follower. As always, thank you to my wonderful channel members. You were the Chaos to my Chaos worshiper, giving me the power I need to keep going on my dark road. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe. Now. Okay, but never forget Fable. It's all about the Mets, baby. About the Mets, yeah. Oh, okay. It's about the Mets, I gotcha. Also, I'm now going to make a PNG of you as in a football gear as, as one of the Chicago Bears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you have fun with that. Ooh, whatever.